Hello, and welcome to another Mario Kart 8 custom track tutorial. Uh, this one's actually going to be more of a just pure modeling tutorial rather than anything to specifically to do with Mario Kart 8. Uh, but it is related nevertheless. Uh, I've received a request recently, and I'd kind of been planning to go over this in the past, over how I do some modeling of like cliffs and how do I do some modeling of grass edges going into cliffs. Stuff like that. Um, first things first, this episode is kind of going to talk about grass edges going in the cliffs uh, rather than uh, the anything with the actual modeling of cliffs themselves, which will probably be in another tutorial here. Um, but so, what am I really talking about here? Well, if you notice in Mario Kart 8 specifically, um, there is typically on the edge of like a like grassy plain going into a cliff. There's always like a rounded edge of grass going down into the cliff. It's never just like if I edit this existing road here. It's never like, hey, here's the grass and then this is the cliff. It's always a, like a rounded edge going down into the cliff that kind of billows out over the top of the cliff. Now, there's a few ways to do this. Um, in fact, I'm sure there's plenty more ways to do this that I'm not really even going to think about here. Or discuss here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to at least discuss four ways about how to do it, although two of them are kind of related. Um, but first way, uh, there, basically it kind of just depends on your preference or your situation or whatnot. So I'll just give you a few options here, because I am by no means a modeling expert. For all I know, this these could be like the single worst ways to do this. Uh, so my first way here is going to be probably the simplest, but it's also the most situational, I'd say. Um, so basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit E to extrude after selecting the entire outside edge here and then that'll be the start of our cliff face uh and then i'm gonna hit uh control r i'm gonna that's gonna create a subdivision of the edges gonna drag that up to about here and then i'm gonna hit control r again inside of here and split it out a few times that looks fine there uh and then i'm gonna hold alt and click on this edge here which will select the entire edge loop Actually, and then I'm going to hold Shift and Alt and also select these two edge loops here. And then I'm just going to drag them out along the Y-axis a bit. That's uh, probably too much. And then stop there. Deselect the top and bottom of those so we have just the middle and then do the same thing there. And then we'd probably just like, I don't know, let me... Uh, cliff. Sure, let me get a cliff here. Uh, and then I'll just kind of on this big wall here. Um, that was odd. I was having some weird intense lag over here. And in fact, I still am. Uh, so <laughs> this might be a short-lived tutorial here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assign the cliff material, UV unwrap. Uh, do a little bit of work there. Uh, well, that looks terrible, but you get the idea that that's eventually going to be a cliff face. And you just select all these faces, UV unwrap them, do whatever you need to do. Uh, but basically that's just kind of it. There you have a rounded edge. Uh, you'd probably have to do a little bit more modeling than that, but there you go. Uh, now, obviously that seemed really simple. But the kind of the problem with that method is uh, it really only works if you're going to be extruding, you know, you're going to be extruding along one direction. Uh, because, like, if this road continued in a full circle, I couldn't just drag everything along the y-axis. I'd have to basically do each of these individually. Like, here you can already tell this is kind of, like, screwed up because it's rounded. It's not rounded in the correct way. Like, this is the front of it. I'd manually have to like grab these and move them and do a bunch of manual work in order for that to work. 
uh, properly, but it is a quick and dirty way if you kind of have your entire grass edge all facing in one direction. Uh, anyways, it's very similar to that method over here. I'm going to, once again, uh, start by extruding down here along the outside edge. Uh, once again, I'm going to subdivide, go here. Uh, and then I'll probably actually subdivide this one a little bit more. Uh, eh, that's probably too much. Let's just do it the same way we did last time. Um, now, the difference here is rather than simply just grabbing the edges and pulling them out, I'm instead going to select the middle group of faces here. And I'm going to say face extrude along normals, uh, which is for some reason behaving really wonky right now. Uh, I'm going to have to manually set the out offset to like zero point. Uh, let's say 0 0.03. Nope, still too big. 0 0.01? No, that's too small. Two, that's fine, whatever. Uh, anyways, now that obviously looks wrong, um, but we're gonna need to fix it up here. So I'm gonna go to edge select, I'm gonna hold alt, and I'm gonna select this edge loop up here. I'm gonna hit GG, uh, and then drag that up to the top. I'm gonna do the same for the bottom here. GG, drag that down, uh, and then I'm gonna select this new top one here and hit gg and move it along this face here gg uh in case you i think i've covered it in a previous tutorial that just moves edges and vertices and things along an edge uh but anyways i'm just kind of going to do something like that and then we can i'm going to hit a and then m to merge uh merge vertices by distance, because that'll get rid of the kind of duplicated edges along the top and bottom. And now we have another nice curve with the added benefit that it is actually following our, uh, it's following our turn, basically. So you can kind of do this along completely round edges and stuff. Same here, you'd kind of just take everything in the grass, UV unwrap that. And then you kind of just apply a cliff face down here. Uh, I'd do a better job UV unwrapping for this, but for some reason my computer is really not liking this right now. Um, so I'm kind of just giving an impression and then <laughs> it's too big. Uh, something like that. Uh, you do extra modeling on these cliffs. Like I kind of said earlier, I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial probably cover it in either the next tutorial or sometime soon here. Um, but here, there you go. That's probably the method I would use most often if I'm doing exactly like I just did, which is I have an existing roadway that I am connecting up to. Uh, it's pretty simple to do it that way. Uh, another way to do it is with subdivision surfaces. Uh, so this time, rather than just working straight off of the road here, I'm going to um, create a, yeah, we'll create a plane. I'll drag it out here. Uh, and then I'm going to go into here and add a modifier for uh, subdivision surface, uh, which basically just takes the existing shape and then adds double the amount of vertices and smooths out the distance between those vertices. And I'm going to just extrude this in a way that kind of follows our curve. I will say I, I would probably prefer the last method that I used to this one if I'm working with a pre-existing road, hooking it up to something like that. Uh, but this method does kind of have its uses for easily smoothing shapes out. Um, anyways, drag this out. Drag this out. You select this entire top face, and then I'm going to extrude down a little bit. 
And then I'm going to hit Control R in the middle here. And that's going to kind of form our actual like grass edge to select the bottom set of faces first. And I'm going to hit I to insert faces. Inset faces, I'm sorry. Um, and then I'm going to go in here with the edge select. I'm going to select the inside of that face, but I'm not going to select the edges that were inside the face, if that makes sense. Um, and then in, I'm going to go up to tool, no, item, sorry, and then mean crease. I'm going to set up to one, which is going to tell it when it's doing the subdivision surface to create a hard edge there. And then I'm going to select all these faces inside and I'm going to extrude down. And there you go. That kind of creates the same shape you can kind of tell that we had earlier. Uh, and then now we can delete all of the vertices that are in the inside of the turn, basically. You know, I deleted a few too many. And there you go. That kind of forms the same basic shape as before. Uh, although we'd probably want to extrude this down again. And we could probably right click on these and, or no, have to go up to edge and say clear. Never mind. I guess we just got to do it that way. Uh, but yeah, uh, the advantage is the subdivision modifier in this case is uh, say I wanted to like may have this cliff go out a little bit. Uh, you kind of just drag this out and it sort of smooths the edges appropriately around it. Uh, if I wanted a little more resolution on the cliff, I could just control R here and then work with those. Uh, it's very, very helpful. I'm probably doing a terrible job of showing just how helpful this is, but uh when you're done you'd basically just apply this subdivision and now it actually has the same resolution it's you could see that now it actually like separated the vertices out and basically i'd extrude i'd turn on snapping and then extrude some of these uh vertices out to meet our original plane here and fill the vertices by selecting so basically, it's like select here, press E, move it to the next vertice along here, select all four of these vertices, press F to fill, and so on to connect it up to the existing roadway. Um, again, I would probably, if you're connecting to an existing roadway, I'd probably just use the second method that I listed. Uh, I feel like subdivision is probably more useful if you are doing like a background cliff that you're not actually hooking up to a roadway. Um, but it definitely has its uses. Uh, and a fourth way, which is kind of related to the way we just did there with the subdivision, is uh, this way works if we have an existing cliff face, but we don't have any grass on top of the cliff face yet. Uh, like maybe the wall was more important for the actual track than the, than the uh, grass on top. Um, so let me just... There's subdivision again. Da, da, da. This isn't actually part of the steps. This is me making the existing cliff face. I don't know. I'll just make up a little bit of bullcrap here. So there's kind of our existing cliff face. Uh, let me apply, apply this. Uh, so technically you don't need need to attach the grass to the cliff face you could just create a cube or something drag that out to here uh scale that up move the cube up to the top of the thing here apply subdivision surface to the cube kind of like we did earlier uh I gotta turn off snapping. Put another edge in the middle there, and then you'd probably just like work with this cube here and 
drag the grass so that it kind of matches the cliff face underneath manually uh, and then again this is kind of something you'd want for just like a background hill you wouldn't really want to use this method if you're actually going to have uh, any drivable surface near this uh, but anyway something like that where you kind of just shape the object to match the cliff face that you're working with by just grabbing vertices and edges and moving them so that they properly cover the cliff face uh, the one draw, huge drawback with this method is, uh, well, it looks less clean. It's definitely not something you'd want the drivers to be too close to. Um, you can get it to look a lot cleaner than I have here. I'm just kind of screwing around with it. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, shade smooth here, shade smooth. Um, but either way, so you kind of got this like grassy top up here. One big problem with this method is if I apply this surface, uh, I'd have to go in and manually delete the vertices that are inside the hill to save on try count for the model because those faces are never going to be used. Uh, so you may end up with like some extra faces and stuff doing it this way that you don't really want and it'll kind of balloon your try count a little bit but you could do it if you want uh so there you go that's kind of a quick overview of three different ways of doing little grassy lips and things on your edges uh probably i would use this middle method the most often but the subdivision has its uses if you're just working in the background and you need to make subtle changes to the background and stuff. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.